Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Money Moments for May. Our topic today will be contactless cards and digital wallets. Now we're all looking for ways to reduce the amount of contact we have with public surfaces, so I thought this would be a good topic for our May Money Moments. To get started, we have to talk about plastic cards. Let's do a few definitions. We have a debit card in our wallet. A debit card is linked to your checking account. When you make a purchase, the money comes directly out of your checking account. That debit card can also be used for an ATM machine to withdraw cash. A credit card, on the other hand, is access to a line of credit. It's, it's basically a loan. Uh, you're given a loan limit and you can charge items to it and then you repay it monthly. There are three ways to use a plastic card. You can swipe the card. It takes the information off the magnetic stripe on the back and it authorizes the transaction. You can dip the card. Dipping the card, it means you're using the chip portion of your card. That's the most common these days. And then the third way is you can tap the card. And that's what we're going to talk about today is the contactless cards. To tell whether you have a contactless card, you know, the, your financial institution issues you a plastic card, how do you know if it's a contactless card? What you'll do is you'll look on that card for a symbol. Let me show you what the symbol, this is the contactless symbol. That will be on the front or back of the card. A contactless card, you still, if you have one of those cards with that symbol on it, you can use it all these three ways. You can swipe it, you can dip it, or you can just tap it. You might think that tapping might be too easy and it's not going to be safe. Well, when you tap it, your name, address, and all that card verification codes, they're not transmitted. So if someone is able to um, fraudulently obtain your payment information, it would be nearly impossible for them to complete a contactless payment. The card generates a one-time code, and that code is useful, useless after that. So it is a very, very secure way to use your card. Let me tell you the steps of using a contactless card. Check your card for that symbol. Check the store reader. When you're in the store or the grocery store using the card, you got to make sure that has that symbol on it or that reader won't take a tap. Then you tap the reader and you then you, you can spend up to the limit provided by your financial institution. Advantages of using a contactless card. It's quicker than using the dip. Quicker than using dipping. It reduces contact with the public surface. There's less wear and tear on your card. And it's better for overseas travel, believe it or not. Part two of my discussion today will be on digital wallets. A digital wallet is an app on your phone. It stores many of the items that you already carry around in your physical wallet, but it's electronic. Um, how do you create a digital wallet? Well, there's you have choices. You can, you can choose what wallet you want. You can have a Google Pay wallet, you can have an Apple Pay wallet, Samsung Pay wallet, or PayPal. You download that app, and then in that app, you add a payment method, which means you add your debit card information, your codes, your numbers, or your credit card numbers into that app, or both of those cards into your app. The benefits of having a digital wallet convenient. You never have to say, did I remember to bring my card with me? Because it's in your phone. Um, it's fast. It minimizes contact with people, germs, which are important these days. Secure. It uses a form of tokenization and is encrypted. Now, those are big words I know, but what it means is your information is never shared with any merchant. Nobody has your numbers. It's all scrambled. So how do you use a digital wallet? Well, you have that app on your phone and you're in the grocery store and that grocery store has the symbol that says, yes, you can do contactless. So you put your phone right up to, you tap it and your groceries are paid. Simple as that. 
So you might want to look into these products, uh, contactless cards and digital wallets, and, and now you know how they work. Um, and in my final point of discussion is I always try to save people money. Uh, I found an, a, a way just the other day. Uh, Paul and I went shopping. We're getting ready to retire in early 2022, and we're trying to cut down our bills. And so I'm attacking the insurance bills. I'm attacking the phone bill and the TV bill. And so this week's job was to attack Verizon phone bill. And one of the simplest ways to, to lower your phone bill uh, was, I found out, if we set up our payments to be made monthly automatically out of our checking account, we would save $10 a piece uh, because we have two phone lines, so it would be $20 savings a month. That was simple. I write a check every month and mail it to the Verizon. I will no longer mail a check. I will no longer have to put a stamp on that envelope. I will no longer have to go to the post office. I set my payments to come out the fifth of every month, uh, right out of my checking, and um, we save $20 a month on the bill. Now, $20 a month might not seem like a lot, but if you multiply it by 12, it's $240. Just another way to save a little bit of money. Just sharing what I learned two days ago at the Verizon store. Well, I hope you have a, a good spring, and we're looking forward to the summer. And thank you for sharing your time with me on Money Moments.